Spinal muscular atrophy is an autosomal recessive disease that affects 1 out of 10,000 people. Research on SMA is extremely important, as it is the leading genetic cause of death in children. There are two very important genes involved in this disease, SMN1 and SMN2. These genes are named after the protein called survival motor neuron, SMN, an essential communication protein among neurons. This protein is vital in keeping neurons alive to transmit nerve impulses. If there is not enough of the protein, necrosis of the motor neurons occurs, and without adequate neural activity, the brain is unable to connect with the muscles in the body and their function is diminished and atrophied. Symptoms vary between four different types of SMA, but most symptoms are similar and include extremely weak muscles that get progressively weaker over time. It is common for a child to have more than one of these types of SMA. The purpose of this experiment is to gain a greater hold on the socio-psychological aspects of living with SMA. The goal of this experiment, by associating some of the symptoms of SMA with the daily lives of the research team, is that we can attempt to further our understanding of the hardships of the symptoms of this disease. The experiment called for four separate treatments, which represented a specific aspect of the disease that an individual would experience if they were diagnosed with the disease. The scale that we use to quantitatively analyze the effects of the disease on affected persons is the Sheehan Disability Scale. This scale has three parts, work, school, social life, and family life and responsibilities. The rankings fall into a scale from 0 to 10, 10 indicating that the symptom drastically disrupted the aspect of your life, and 0 indicating that it had no impact. We predict that the symptoms of SMA will be overall moderately to markedly severe in our daily lives, when only mimicking one symptom per given time of the disease. We hypothesize that treatment 1, using wheelchairs as our means of mobility, will cause the most extreme disruption in our as it will inhibit both indoor and outdoor activities and traveling around campus. Perhaps the most obvious affected aspect of an individual suffering from spinal muscular atrophy is mobility. Most patients with the disease will never take an unaided step in their life, and individuals who end up living into their teenage years will eventually require a wheelchair due to the progressive effects of SMA. This restriction of mobility was simulated by me using an electric wheelchair to navigate around Holmes Hall during normal school days. The social aspects as a result of being confined to a wheelchair were the most extreme. Most conversations were initiated with questions as to why I was in the wheelchair, which I found to be annoying and rude, and ultimately it distracted me from schoolwork. Also, navigating to class was restricted by elevators and ramps, which proved to be very inconvenient. The overall experience was very valuable, especially with mobility being a big part of everyone's lives. The treatment I was assigned was being fed one meal a day. This simulated the symptom of weak muscles or paralysis found in SMA, primarily type 1 and 2, which limits range of motion and ability to self-feed. In the beginning of the experiment, my rankings were very high, especially for the so social category of the Sheehan scale. This was most likely caused by the environment in which I was fed my one meal a day. I was ridiculed jokingly and non-jokingly, and even though it was an experiment, I felt insulted by it. My other category rankings were not as severe. Near the end, my overall rankings decreased quite a bit. My social rankings fell most significantly due to adjustment to the dirty looks and environment I was fed in. Overall, the experience was worthwhile. Being in that vulnerable state really showed how a simple symptom can impact your life significantly. It was good to feel myself adjusting to the treatment, which was a satisfying result compared to how the treat experiment started. The symptom that I simulated had to do with being unable to suck, sip, or slurp. This was to simulate glucio and oral muscle weakness that is common in type 1 SMA. This type is common in infants, which would make it hard for them to be able to be fed by spoon or by bottle. This means that most have to have a feeding tube. Since a feeding tube was not possible, liquids were poured into my mouth. This allowed for the least amount of mu mouth muscle to be used. At the beginning, it was very difficult to get used to having to pour liquids into my mouth when it was easy to just do it normally. It was disastrous on occasions where I was in a rush and ended up spilling the liquid that I was trying to consume all over myself. This resulted in my scores being slightly elevated from what I would normally score otherwise. At the end, it became routine and was easy to do. I was not spilling my food on myself, so it was easier, which was reflected in my scores. The experience was enlightening. Though the symptom I simulated was minor, I was able to accommodate for the setback and continue living my life in a relatively normal fashion. In this treatment, the individual attempted to simulate symptoms experienced by a patient with severe muscle weakness. 
Over the course of 30 days, the simulator had to request assistance whenever he desired to sit up or move from a supine or prone position. During the first 15 of the 30 days, the patient reported rankings of near extreme distraction from their everyday life. As predicted, the rankings gradually decreased in this period and the patient became more comfortable and familiar with dealing with the symptom by slowly adapting daily life to accommodate the condition. During the last 15 of the 30 days, the scores continued to gradually decrease. The patient also continued accommodating the disease by following a more structured schedule during the school week. This aspect of muscle weakness due to SMA was extremely hard to cope with. Although it was less of a distraction on the STS scale, the symptom was very difficult to experience overall. This condition helped me understand the hardships and the burdens of a spinal muscular atrophy patient. Rankings gathered from all four treatments over the 30-day period were analyzed using linear regressions. The graph shows the linear regressions for each treatment over the 30 days. Overall, all treatments show decreases in average Sheehan rankings over time, with the most significant decreases in rankings for treatment 1 and 4. Based on the results of this graph, our original predictions that the average rankings would decrease over time were upheld. Treatment 1 was hypothesized to cause the most disruption due to the importance of physical movement in everyday life. This was rejected because treatment 4 was found to cause the most disruption on an average basis. Treatment 4 also showed the most constant decreasing slope and ratings as well and fits best to the linear model, which is represented by an R-squared value of 0.7055. For future study, treatments could include experiencing all four disabilities for each subject over a duration of time and each subject experiencing the disabilities in a different order. This will determine if increased disruption in our daily lives can occur repeatedly due to the introduction of varying disabilities separately. In addition, the test will reveal if certain disabilities influence more or less the ability to adapt to other disabilities based on order of treatment.